Tristan, how did you react yesterday when you found out that they fired Ty? Um, obviously, you never want to see a, you know, a man lose his job, especially a great coach and a guy that uh, you know, have a great relationship with like T. Lou. Um, you know, for us, you know, you know, at the end of the day, you just got to think about you know the great stuff he's done here. You know, uh, being an associate head coach with David Black, going to the finals, falling short. You know, not having Kyrie, K. Love, and then him um, taking over midway through the season and us winning a championship and having the most consecutive playoff wins as a new uh, head coach. Uh, you know, all that stuff. You got to remember those good times. You know, he's done a lot. For myself and other players here, he's done a lot for the city. Uh, you know, help us reach our goal, which is to win a championship. So, you know, you gotta give him a lot of credit, and he did a hell of a job here. Obviously, uh, it's unfortunately, you know, with the slow start, uh, management felt like it was time to make a change. And at the end of the day, as players, you gotta roll with the punches. Hey, Tristan, you guys knew this would be a hard and challenging year. Yeah. Have you underachieved to this point, though? Yeah, I think we we haven't played to our style. I think we have uh, definitely let ourselves down. There's been multiple games where we feel like we should have won those games going into them, and there's been games where we've rallied back and then had chances to win. So, of course, I would never expect this team to be 0-6, but, um, you know, LD coaching us today and, and, you know, whatever's going on with him, uh, you know, he told us to start a new chapter. Start a new chapter. Let's let's forget about, you know, the the previous six games. Uh, All that matters is tomorrow against Atlanta. Uh, They came, our home opener, and... uh, so we got to take the challenge and, and get, get some get back. 0-6 is a bad start, Tristan. Of course. No doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, but are you <clears throat> concerned that the organization is going away from what you veterans were told your direction would be during training camp or even before that in the summer? I mean, no one's told me that uh, they don't want to win or they're going a certain direction. So... I mean, if you know something that I don't know, then, you know. But for me, uh, we just want to come out and play whoever's playing. We're playing to win until we're told otherwise. So that's going to be my approach every night is to come out and compete and and do what it takes to help put our team in position to win the game. When the team starts 0-6 and then fires the coach, what kind of message does that send to the players? Got to be better. Got to be better. Uh, of course... In this business, you know, I've been here long enough, so, you know, whenever they make a change, it's usually the coach. And then, so that's that's the first domino effect, so we got to be better. So if we change it around and start winning games, then uh, the fat won't get trimmed as much. Is it fair to say that you guys were emotional when you heard the news? Of course, of course, of course. Uh, you know, Chile wasn't a coach that, you know, guys play for coaches that are hope they get fired and they don't care but you know T. was a guy that everyone loved from you know the medical staff to the front office to the security guards everyone loved T. Lou he was a very respectful man uh, polite he's happy to be here especially with his uh, with his health condition with him being able to fight those battles um, so everyone loved him loved him and it was definitely uh, sad that he was gone that we had to let him go but at the same time we just got to keep pushing forward you didn't get to talk to him in person Oh, I saw him, so. Oh, you did? Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, I didn't know if he'd already gone by the time you No, got no, I come in early, so. Oh. <laughs> did he give you any kind of parting message? No, he just said thank you for the opportunity to coach you, and, you know, you know how to find me, so. It's all good, positive. With, with possible, it sounds like Kevin could miss multiple games. How does that compound your challenge here? Uh, obviously, it makes it tough. You know, Kev's the 20 and 10 guy, and then is, you know, the franchise player of our team and, and an all star, so it's obviously tough with him. Uh, being out, but we got to step up as a group collectively, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, whether, whether, whether his injury is, you know, long-term, whatever it is, it's, Kev's got to make sure he gets that right. At the end of the day, <clears throat> being a big man in this league, you know, what I tell him is that, you know, it's, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. You know, uh, we're going to need it for the long haul, so there's no point of him playing hurt for 10 more games than missing three months. It's pointless, so for him, it's about him getting healthy. And at the end of the day, that's, you know, my brother. So I'm going to give him the advice that's best for Kevin. And for Kevin right now, it's for him to get healthy. I asked the same thing to Kobe, but um, he said that you guys still want to compete, and he feels like mm-hmm. you haven't played your best basketball, yeah. and you can play better. And Ty said that even the other night before he was let go. So what do you guys see behind the scenes that makes you believe that you can be better than this 0 6 
Because we show a lot of flashes. We show a lot of flashes and we show stretches where we can put it together and get multiple stops and play good basketball. But then there's times where we have, you know, there's where teams come down 11 times and score 11 times on us. So we show the flashes and show that we can play the brand of basketball that we want to play, and, and it will lead to success. We just haven't been able to put it together for 48 minutes. So that's our that's the next challenge for us. How tough of a step is that, though, to, to go from playing a 30-minute game or a 32-minute game to a 48-minute game? That's tough, but um, I guess they mentally locked in. I know guys might get fatigued or might be frustrated. Things not, might be going well for them offensively or defensively. They might be having a tough night, but you guys stay the course, and uh, um, we're going to have to figure out a way to, to do that. At the end of the day, you got to put a good 48 minutes together because the way the NBA's been playing right now, they're playing fast, and teams are attacking all games. So you got to you know, withstand those runs, and you got to almost go on your own runs too. you think you guys have been pressing the trying to do too much, you know, individually trying to do too much, you know, like... Or the you mean like taking like the, like trying to do it on their own, like one-on-one? -on -one? the world on your shoulders kind of individually. But kind of we don't got, we don't got the players to do that, so... Don't have the player to do that, so... Our closest player doing that is Kevin Love, and he's out for some time, so... In order for us to have some success or put us up in position to win some ball games, we're going to have to play the collective as a unit. But I think guys understand that. I wouldn't think guys are doing it on purpose. I'm not saying <laughs> guys are coming out and saying, hey, move out the way, one for low, I'm going to win the game for us. I think we just got to find ways to move the ball some more. And uh, that just comes with just watching film and, and just trusting each other. So I wouldn't say there's no guy in particular that's trying to be selfish. I think we're just, we're just all just trying to figure it out. And um, we just got to do it together. Tristan, 2016 was only two calendar years ago. Mm -hmm. You marvel at just how different things are here in such a short amount of time. Uh, yeah, it's a little different. But that's life, though. That's life. Every year, roster's going to be different. Front office is going to be different. So it's just part of the business that we sign up for. Um, it's not like a marriage. It's more like a boyfriend-girlfriend type thing in the NBA. You kind of just date new people every year. So it's all good.